All right, take the stage, Lord. Have your way. Are you ready for today? Are you sure? Tell your neighbor, I am ready for God's word. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Not a jot, not a tito of his word shall pass unfulfilled. Are you ready? Uh. I can. Uh, uh. And somebody who is new will say, what is that? No, it's not a magical one. It's telling God, enlarge my capacity to receive, to retain, and to be able to release in the days to come. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. Take the stage, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a vessel. Nothing more. More. And Lord, when you are done, <laughs> when you're done please, take the glory. please take the glory. I am satisfied, satisfied just to see you glorified. Take the stage. cannot say for how long the family and the extended of family of Zachariah and Elizabeth prayed for, how long they prayed for, for John to come. I think they, even Zachariah himself had prayed to the point that he had, this one is not necessary because my wife is barren and just pushed it away. So when Gabriel showed up and said, Rejoice, your wife will conceive and bring forth a son. You shall call his name John. He first, before that word was given, he said, What prayer has been answered? Your prayer has been answered. Which one? I've been praying this prayer. Pray. How many of you have been praying for Nigeria? And it seems things are going down instead of coming up. You think God has forgotten? You think he will not answer? I know he will answer. I know there will be peace in our land. There will be widespread joy east, west, north, and south in this land. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will make it happen. Hey, listen to this. Hmm? If you can't speak God's word, if you can't speak peace into the atmosphere, if you cannot bring about a change in the hearts of the leaders and the led, because you do not know what these people face, and he who wears his shoes knows where it pinches. Nobody wants to be tagged a failure. They might not understand what is happening, but there's a God in heaven who gives wisdom to rulers. And it will help our nation. Yeah. Violence will not erupt in this land. Yeah. Peace will reign supreme. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Oh, pastor, are you saying they should not protest? It is a fundamental human right to protest. But please, don't break down the little infrastructure we have. And don't let it turn into a bloodbath. I want you to know that I led protests in this nation. And even phones that were lost in the battleground were returned. Nobody hurt anyone. Nobody killed anyone. You can make your point without letting anyone destroy. I mean, without letting anything be destroyed, and the government and the leaders also should restrain themselves not to turn simple protests into a bloodbath. The nation is on an, an edge now. Don't push us into the precipice. Can I hear amen? amen? Let me come back to Zechariah. Zechariah's mouth had to be short because of his unbelief. And then the angel relocated into the house of who? You know what Mary means? It's a derivation of Mara, which means bitterness. This young virgin girl or lady was uh, doing his own house old church, and Gabriel showed up. Hey, Mary said, hey, what? <laughs> she was so scared. I said, what is this matter? Good news from heaven. You are going to conceive and you bring forth a child? He said, angel, I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. I don't know a man. It's impossible for me to be pregnant without having an intimate relationship with a man. <laughs> How shall this be? I do not know a man, Gabriel said. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. May the Holy Ghost come upon our leaders today. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether they are Muslims or Christians. The Holy Ghost came upon donkey that Balaam was riding, he spoke with human voice. They would know what to say to calm the atmosphere. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And that child that you conceive in your womb we call the Son of the Highest. He kept quiet looking at this angel. Well, these beings, they don't operate from here. How can I believe what he had just said? Oh, by the way, uh, I saw you praying last night, asking God to intervene in Elizabeth's matter. She's now six months pregnant. Blessed is she who believes. When he, she heard, eh, eh, <laughs> this is the way I will prove that this man had come to lie to me. Elizabeth, six months. This is why, bam, 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 bam. He got uphill as soon as he stepped at the door of Elizabeth. The Spirit of God came upon her. The baby lived for joy because he was anointed. The baptizer and the Holy Ghost was carried by Mary there. And he said, what is the mother of my Lord? Doing in my house, as soon as I heard the voice of the salutation, the people leaped for joy. Blessed is she who believes, for there shall be a performance of every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If Elizabeth were to sing that day, she prophesied, she spoke, and Mary sang. If Elizabeth were to sing that day, what do you think she'll be singing? I can hear you. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. What the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for. What we waited for has come to pass. See what. day 
is at hand. What that song we go throughout this country, what we waited for has come to pass. Why? Because I know Nigeria will flourish again. Nigeria will flourish again. Nigeria. And in case you think it won't happen because of the economic situation, the challenges we face and all this, I want you to know God is bigger than what you think. You are bigger than what, what people, people say. You are bigger than what people say. be seated in his presence. That drama is tempting me. I'm not going to fall for the temptation because I want to finish on time. Hallelujah. Today we shall continue with part four of our series, The Dispositions of Real Men. Say that with me. I told you not to provoke me, oh. If we ask you to speak, please speak. Oh, I refuse to be provoked. Can I hear him, man? Yeah. What is the theme of our message today? The dispositions of real men. This series began right from the 35th anniversary in April when we we're looking at mere men. We are not mere men, we are real men. This is part four of the series, The Disposition of Real Men. So far, we have covered two of such dispositions. Can anyone help me? What's number one disposition? Real men are dead and violent men. Why? Dead men don't complain. Dead men don't do anything. They're dead. The Bible says, we are dead and our lives are hidden with Christ in God. So anything we do is not to react. You don't find the reactions of the apostles in the Bible. You find the acts of the apostles. We don't react, we act. But they are violent dead men, not because they would release their violence against any person, but against the works of the flesh in their own lives. Real men are dead violent men. Number two, last Sunday we dealt with real men are heavenly men. Real men are heavenly men. By the grace of God, we shall cover the remaining four points today. I want to lay this message to rest, and you have to cooperate with me. If I ask for a scripture, you give it quickly. If I ask for a comment, you contribute your quota so that we do it together. Can I hear amen? amen. Fasten your seatbelt. In case the altitude is higher than usual. But trust God with me that we shall both cruise smoothly and we will land safely in Jesus' mighty name. Now, point number three because real men are heavenly men, they are prone to catalyzing culture on the earth. Our citizenship is in heaven. The Bible says, Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 3, to Nicodemus, no man has ever ascended to heaven before except the Son of Man who came from heaven and who is now in heaven. 
And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible says, And we have born the image of the earthly man, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. God's assignment by the power of the Holy Spirit is to squeeze us into the mold of Jesus Christ in this day and age. We have been made conformable to the image of the Son of His love, so that it will be one among many brethren. Because real men are heavenly men, they are prone to catalyzing culture on the earth. They have such deep impacts on their societies by taking hold of their positions of divine influence to shift the destinies of societies and nations. Remember, it was one Daniel who knelt down to pray for 21 days and the prince of Persia was shifted. Say to your neighbor, Satan can be shifted. <laughs> Principalities and powers can be dislodged. Let me give you at least four other examples where this happened. Number one, this was what happened when Mordecai the Jew was delivered from the evil plot and the schemes of Eman the Agagite. The moment that happened, non-Jews naturalized to become Jews. Can you see how culture was catalyzed and changed? Non-Jews in the land began to naturalize to become Jews because of the influence of Mordecai the Jew. Esther chapter 8, 15 to 17. Esther 8, 15 to 17. So Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white with a great crown of gold and a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness. And in the name of Jesus, Nigeria is west, north, and south. You have light and gladness. You have joy and honor, not only in your nation, but in the community of nations, in the mighty name of Jesus. I love the next verse. And in every province and city, wherever the king's command and decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. The many of the people of the land became Jews because fear of the Jews fell upon them. You don't understand this. If you want to really understand this, you run into Canada to lay hold of Canadian passport. You run to America to lay hold of American passport. Many of you are ready for Irish passport. Some are looking for even talking anything, including Egyptian. <laughs> or you go to the Barbados, anywhere, just put money here, get another passport. This is, this is punitive. But now see, people clean up wanting Nigerian passport. That's what happened there. People are going to come into this nation and learn how did God turn it around. And we will be able to say, this is not the work of any man, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear amen? amen? The first time I went to England or the UK in 1980, July, I left Lagos July 3rd, I arrived American Independence Day July 4th. It was at the border post that I got six month visa. I didn't apply for any visa here, I just got that. They stamped it six months. Can you believe it that one Naira then was one dollar eight cents? In fact, that was not 1980, that was 1985. I bought BTA from my wife that was working in the bank then and asked her to help me change money. It was one Naira to one dollar eight cents. Don't tell me the rate now. And I spent money, Naira no, 20 Naira on Oxford Street. It was a legal tender. You enter Harrod's shop, you see it written boldly, Kedu, Sonu, Ekabo. But guess what? A new Nigeria is coming. Yeah. Men will naturalize and say, we need Nigerian passport, or we need permanent stay. Yeah. A second example. The refusal of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to bow to gold, the golden statute. When those three Hebrew boys refused to bow to the golden statute, they frustrated the king's word. 
And that led to their promotion in Babylon. Daniel chapter 3, 26 to 30. Daniel 3, 26 to 30. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> they were called three Hebrew boys before. He changed that immediately. Servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, administrators, governors, all of them had bowed to gold. And the king's counselors gathered together. And they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed. Now were their garments affected. And the smell of fire, the smell of smoke was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, blessed be the, was he born again? Who led him to the cross? Who introduced salvation message to him? <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, blessed be the God of Shadrach. He didn't know what to call him. They had God of thunder. What is God of thunder? Shall go? They had God of iron. What is the God of iron? Ogu. But he did not know how to describe this God. He identified that God by the people who broke the power of fire. Dismissed it. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree. He changed the decree. I make a decree that any people, the one who said anyone does not bow will be thrown into fiery furnace. He changed the decree. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be caught in pieces. And their houses shall be made an ash heap because there's no other God who can deliver like this. Stand to your feet. People are about to know my God. People are about to know the God I serve. In this nation and the nations of the earth, people are about to know the God I serve because he will deliver and he will identify with his own. In the name of Jesus, in this year of unusual and uncommon exaltation, God will be glorified through my life. Can I hear amen? amen? Then the king promoted. Did they apply for promotion? No. I can't hear you. No. Did they lobby? No. Were they bribing senators? No. To confirm them or not to confirm them? No. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Seated. The same thing happened, number three, when Daniel refused to pray in the name of the king and only prayed in the name of his God. He waited for the decree to be signed that no man must pray in the name of any other God apart from the name of the king. The king did not realize it was a setup was planning to promote Daniel to be president of presidents. And he, he heard that he refused to pray in his name. The consequence was to throw him into lions. Then you have read the story before. And an angel of the Lord was sent to shut them out of the lions. <laughs> when he refused to bow or to call on the name of the, of the king instead of God, Darius had to issue another decree. When Daniel was brought out of the lion's den without a single scratch on his body. Daniel 6, 24 to 28. And the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel. And they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, their wives, and the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote to all peoples, tell your neighbor, are you hearing? Amen. Nations Amen. and languages Amen. that dwell in all the earth. It was a world class ruler. Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall endure to the end. It delivers and rescues, and it works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. 
who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. The Lord will deliver you from the power of the lions. The enemy may be running, going about, seeking whom to devour. That will not be your portion. On the road, it will not be your portion. At home, it will not be your portion. When you are airborne, it will not be your portion. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius, in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Your prosperity is around the corner. The Lord will promote you far above your fellows because you serve him with all of your heart in the name of Jesus. A similar thing happened when Paul and his companions arrived in Thessalonica. They changed culture immediately because they were idol worshippers. But when they saw a man that was born lame from his mother's womb, and he said, he perceived, Paul perceived he had faith. He said, get up and walk. When they saw what happened, they changed gear. They began to worship Paul and Barnabas like God. Let's see the story. Acts 17, 1 to 6. Acts 17, 1 to 6. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, and his, as his custom was, went into them and for three sabers reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I preach to you is a Christ. And some of them were persuaded. A great multitude of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. But the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar. Oh, this is not Acts. The story I was talking about is Acts 14. This is Acts 17. It's okay, I'll read this also. But the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, those who have turned culture, <laughs> those who have turned the world upside down, have come here too. Okay? What was their offense? They were saying, there's another king called Jesus. Nigeria is about to experience the Prince of Peace. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. If you backtrack to Acts 14, you'll see the story I was trying to narrate there. Acts 14, now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude both of the Jews and of the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Therefore they stayed there a long time speaking boldly in the Lord who was bearing witness to the word of his grace granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and to the surrounding region. Let's see what happened. And they were preaching the gospel there. Don't die for the sake of the gospel a useless death. If they chase you from this place, go to another place. Do you understand me? And God will show up and manifest his power. Let me read the story on. When they got there, what happened? And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting. Uh, this is part of why I said, I've sat enough, I'm standing. <laughs> a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting. A cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking, Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet, and he leaped and walked. Now, when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices saying in the Laconian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Barnabas was not the one speaking, so he was accorded a greater God, so that Paul was the oracle of Barnabas. <laughs> then the priest of Zeros, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and gallants to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, 
They tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you and preach to you that you should turn from this useless thing. That's what they have known. That's what they have worshipped. And they call it useless and there was no riot. Turn away from these useless things and do what? To the living God who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all things that are in them, who in bygone generations allow all nations to walk in their own ways. That was then, this is now. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good, gave us rain from heaven, fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these saints, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. Culture was changed. Every time you find real men, citizens of heaven, in oppression, they have a way of changing the environment, of decreeing a new decree and ensuring that in the name of Jesus, people come into alignment with God. They have that power to change culture. I pray that we all become true change agents in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now point number four. I have three to go quickly. Real men are reliable solution providers. Real men are reliable solution providers. That's what you need in your nation. That's what we need in Nigeria. True and genuine solution providers. As heavenly men, whenever there are no solutions to human problems on the earth, real men know how to access the heavenly realm for timeless solutions. That was what happened in Genesis 41. Pharaoh had a dream, 41, 1 to 6, 16. He had a dream. He was troubled by the dream. He had no interpretation. The butler remembered. And uh, Joseph was called. And when he had prayed the dream, he told Pharaoh, God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And he began to draw a blueprint for economic revival and survival and economic boom from the dreams of a total stranger. Listen to me. You think you have monopoly of the Holy Spirit. You don't. What are the three languages of the Holy Spirit? Visions, dreams, and prophecy. Who had dreamed this time? Pharaoh. Who interpreted? So when things begin to happen in a nation, don't focus on the natural things that will lead to decay and destruction. Begin to connect heaven and say, how can I help my nation in this situation? Lord, give me the tool. Get, let, make me a solution provider. Nations of the earth came to benefit from Joseph's interpretation. Eventually, God's purpose for Israel was fulfilled because they located their brother that was lost before. And those who lied against Joseph had to tell the truth about him. They went back to the father. Joseph is alive and he's governor over Egypt. Those who have lied against you are about to tell the truth about you. <laughs> In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, there's too many examples. Look at 2 Kings 2, 19 to 22. Real men are reliable men, solution providers. Then the men of the city said to Elisha, Please notice, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord sees. Huh? Huh? Ah, Splendor, what do they call it? Oh, you know it. Uh -huh. But everyone is panicking now. August 1 is coming. August 1 will come. August 1 will go. Nigeria will survive. Yeah. What needs to be done will be done. In the name of Jesus. Please notice the situation of this city is pleasant. As my Lord sees, but the water is bad. And the ground barren. And he said, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the source of the water and cast in the salt there and said, Thou says the Lord, I've healed this water from it. There shall be no more death or barrenness. So the water remains healed to this day 
according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke, real heavenly men are solution providers. He didn't go there to pour poison in the water. He just took salt and poured it there. And you know what he's saying? You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. May God make you solution providers in the mighty name of Jesus. It is for this purpose that real men are reliable men, whether in private or public sector. You don't find a real man diverting the resources of a nation and putting them in his private pocket. You don't find real genuine men except fake men carrying the resources of a nation into private bank accounts overseas. No, whether in the public sector or private sector, real men are reliable solution providers. Friends, there are just too many unreliable mere men in the world and sometimes in the church. So when you find one real man, his worth is more than a million mere men. When Paul the Apostle needed someone to send to the Corinthian and Philippian churches who would deliver his message to them as accurately as he would do by himself, he sent no other person but Timothy. Why? Please listen to Paul in 1 Corinthians 4, 14 to 21. Why did he send Timothy? I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I've begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. For this reason, I've sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of his ways? No, of my ways in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you, but I will come to you shortly, the Lord ways, and I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Is sent Timothy. What do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love and a spirit of gentleness? Why did he send Timothy? Because Timothy is not, was not an eye servant who would do something in the presence of the leader and do another thing behind the leader. See what Paul uh, said to the Philippians. He let them know that he was sending a reliable real man, not mere man. Philippians 2, 19 to 22. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded. Come on. Of all the people that he reached out to in life, I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character. That's the reliability there. You know his proven character that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Do you understand this? Today there are many flocks, but no real sheep. Many followers, but no real disciples. Many parents are scared to hand over their investments to their children. Many business executives are afraid of being away from the office for a few days because no one will manage the business very well. Many in Moses are also afraid to go on a 40-day retreat with God. Why? Because the errors left behind can lead the church into rebellion. People of God, it is my prayer this morning that among us, like-minded helpers will be raised. Yeah. One truly committed servant is better than millions of lip service followers. Thank God for Timothy. He was a man of like mind and like passion, just as Paul. He thought like Paul. He naturally cared for the brethren. He did not need to be forced to do it. He had a passion to do it naturally. When God blesses your life project with like-minded people, your success will come with speed. Can I hear amen? amen. May all our children be Timothys around our homes. May our spouses be those who will understand our passion and go with it. 
The God surround us with Timothys in our businesses and ministries. And may we also be Timothys to many lives, helping them and not frustrating them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Point number five. In case you are wondering how real men are able to turn the world upside down, it is because God's strength is made perfect in their weaknesses. Do you understand me? Oh, men that can boast, I can do this. I know my skill set. I, I, I know my talent. I know my ability. They are usually bypassed by God. In many situations, in churches, in corporations, what you find in the world is that those who are able are not available, and those who are available may not be able. But when God begins to make his strength perfect in their weakness, they outshine the pompous, arrogant idiots who think the world is all about them. The reason real men are able to turn the world upside down is because God's strength is made perfect in their weaknesses. Daniel chapter 10, I'll read on in 19 verses to see who Daniel actually was, how weak he was, and how mightily God used him. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Bertishasar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. Like, do you know when you understand the vision, you know what God had told you, and you spoke to people, and it's not being carried out, it's not being fulfilled? They will look at you like a liar. It will frustrate you. But God is waiting for your weak moment when you're extremely weak, then he manifests himself. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all. Till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river that is the uh, Tigris, I lifted my eye and looked and behold, a certain man clothed in linen whose waist was guarded with gold of Ophers. His body was like burial, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like Churches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. Was he seen in the natural? No. He began to see the invisible so that he could do the impossible. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision alone. But what? They did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. You know, many have fled now. <laughs> Because they don't know what will happen. They don't know where a pastor will spend the weekend. You can write it down. I will spend it in my bedroom. And if you look for my trouble, fire will consume you. If I be the servant of God, let fire come and consume the captain and his 50. Be careful where you step into. We are not all the same. Therefore, I was left alone when I saw this great vision. And what? No strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. That's the man God wants to use. His strength will be made perfect in their weakness. Yet I had the sound of his words, and while I had the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, not bedroom, oh. with my face to the ground. O come, Muna Loni, O Sun Law. Like I sat in the clinic where I went, and they were beating my chest. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> Suddenly, a hand, thrust me, a hand thrust me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands without Parkinson's disease. And he said to me, Oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. For I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood and trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael... One of the chief princes came to help me, for I'd been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Why couldn't that angel pull the prince of Persia away? 
It takes a prince to bind a prince. Now I've come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision refers to many days yet to come. When he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly, one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him, who stood before me? My Lord. Because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me and I've retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. Why was he still speaking? He was gasping for breath. <laughs> then again, the one having the likes of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. His strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul said so. God spoke to Paul. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. When you are weak, then you are strong. Brothers and sisters, real men are examples of what God can do with our weaknesses. Say that with me. Real men are examples of what God can do with our weaknesses. When people examine our lives as real men and see who we have become and what we have accomplished in the midst of our faults, our failures, our flaws, and our frailties and weaknesses, then we know that our greatness is rooted only in God. Our lives are a mystery as they are meant to be an inspiration for the weak and the broken. It is in our flaws and weaknesses that the intrinsic beauty of our creature shines through. Believe me, God shines through our brokenness. There are several examples in the Bible. One was Jacob. Do you know how God described Jacob? A worm with a difference. Have you seen a worm with such new treasure sled designed to trash mountains? So Jacob, Israel, you are a worm. But you are a worm with a difference. I'm going to put some sledge instruments in your mouth. You will trash mountains. Isaiah 41, 14 to 20. Fear not, you worm, Jacob. You men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the only one of Israel. What kind of worm? Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. You shall winnow them, the wind shall carry them away. And the one wind shall scatter them, you shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. The poor and needy seek water, but there is none. Their tongues fail for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in desolate heights, fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the acacia tree, the mitre and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the cypress tree and the pine and the box tree together. Why? That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel has created. When God creates a worm with sledge instruments in its mouth, run for your life. Gideon was another perfect example. You can read the story in Judges chapter 6, 1 to 6, and read in 11 to 16. They were looking for the secret of his strength. If he was a wrestler with bicep and forcep huge, they would have located it. But he was a tiny man. And yet, the anointing of God is upon him, despite his excesses and his frailties and his failures. This man slept all night with a prostitute, and when Philistines came against him, he carried the gates of the city and threw it upon a rock. And they couldn't do nothing to him. That is God's strength being made perfect in his weakness. You are too strong for God. That's your problem. You understand me? He will use people who are not strong like me. And he will manifest his glory. Can I hear amen? 
Another example was David. Do you know David was another worm? Do you know he was a worm? What do you do to a worm? You crush them. Ask Goliath. Am I a dog that you are coming to me with a stick? I will show you you are worse than a dog. You came against me with sword and spear. I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. That was the name that killed Goliath. And all the Goliaths in your life are about to fall. In the mighty name of Jesus. Was he a worm? Psalm 22, 6 to 11. But I am a worm, and that's David for you, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the leap. They shake the head, saying, he trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Wow. Do, they, do people mock you because you trust God? But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while I'm my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth, from my mother's womb. You have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there's none to help. Is that ringing in your head today? Somebody saying there's no one to help you. You cannot make it. No, no. The God of heaven he will show up. He will manifest in your situation. And it will cause a reversal of misfortune. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do you know so was Paul? God's strength was made perfect in his weakness. When he was weak, then he was strong. When he was thrown and left for the dead, his spirit was caused into paradise, into third heaven, and had things which cannot be spoken. I pray that you become such an example. If you're looking for a living example today, you don't have to look too far. You're sincerely speaking to you by God's grace. I am one. May you be one too. Amen. How do I know you can become one? First Corinthians chapter 1, 26 to 31. First Corinthians 1, 26 to 31. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, no many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the best things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him, you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Is anybody glorying in the Lord today here? <laughs> Lift up your hands and thank him. Mo ya logo, baba. Mo ya logo, hey. He be testing me there. May my pay more logo. You understand me? Tie and die. Amo Yalaru, Amo Yalaru, and you say I should not sing. Amo Babatelo, and you don't go. Huh? Mo Yalogo, Baba. Mo Yalogo. If he tells me there. Oh, 
Thank you. Finally, point number six. Real men are gentlemen. <laughs> Real men are who? Real men are gentlemen, and that includes women. That's why we use the phrase ladies and gentlemen, or gentlemen and ladies. Philippians chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. Real men are gentlemen. Therefore, my beloved, and longed for, brethren, my joy and crown, still stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore you, dear, and I implore St. Ike, to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are written in the book of life. Verse number four. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say rejoice. Let your... I can't hear you. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Real men are gentlemen. Let your gentleness be known to mankind. Because the Lord is at hand. I'm sure you know that the Lord Jesus who gives true rest to mankind is gentle and lowly in the earth. Matthew chapter 11, 20 to 30. If he's asking you to imitate him, he's asking you to also imitate his gentleness. Come to me, all you who labor and are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The word gentleness itself means meekness. That's not weakness. Meekness, which means being teachable. Meekness, graciousness, and forbearance. Let me share with you some major attributes of gentlemen so that we're on the same page. It's not just saying ladies and gentlemen, no. Gentlemen always keep their own side of the bargain. That is, gentlemen are promise keepers. In the life of David, there are two instances where David displayed this attribute in his dealings with other people. Let's take example of David and Jonathan. David was dead. I mean, I beg your pardon. Jonathan was dead, buried, long forgotten. And one day in 2 Samuel chapter 9, David got up. Give me 2 Samuel chapter 9. He began to make inquiry. Now David said, is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake long after Jonathan had died? So they had to go and look for Mephibosheth. Read the story yourself. By the time Mephibosheth came, his legs were twisted. And he said, here I am. I am a dog before you. I am your servant. He said, no, you are the son of my friend. I had a covenant with your father. You are going to sit on my table. Your legs will be under the table. Nobody will see it. I will cover you. Your father swore to me. I swore to him. I cannot forget the covenant between your father and I. Long after, if you're, if you're a promise keeper, long after those you enter into covenant with are gone, you're not going to sit on their wealth. You're not going to man, mismanage their estate. You look for their best things. Do you know David did not live in the palace of Saul? Do you know he did not take any land belonging to Saul? He gave them all to Jonathan. And Aram, the king of, uh, where is that? Ah, uh, give me... Where is that? First Chronicles 14. First Chronicles 14, 2. Hiram, the king of Tyre, was the one who sent men to come and build a house for him. So David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel. For his kingdom was highly exalted for the sake of his people, Israel. Mr. President, Mr. Governor, God does not put you in that position for yourself. It's for the sake of the people of the land. You must wake up and smell the coffee. Look at verse 1. Give me verse 1. 
Nobody, whether you are chief justice of the federation, whether you are commander in chief of the armed forces, whether you are police chief, whether you are DSS agent or DSS director, the Lord puts you in that position for the sake of the people. Now here I'm king of Tyre, send messengers to David and cedar trees with masons and carpenters to build him a house. It was a house of cedar. It did not take what belonged to Saul. He seeded them all to Jonathan. And when his own son Absalom rose against him and kicked him out of the palace, David stood and paused and said, they've taken the crown. They've taken the, 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 temp, uh, the, 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 the throne. They've taken everything. But Lord, do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. He bounced back. And when he returned, what did he do? He remembered Basilai the Gileadite who helped him and provided basins and bed for him when he fled from Absalom. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 17, verse 27. 2 Samuel 17, 27. Now it happened when David had come to Mahanim, that Shobit, the son of Nahash from Rabbah, of the peoples of Ammon, Micah, the son of Amiel from Lodiba, and Basilai the Gileadad from Rogelim, what did they do? Next verse, please. Broad beds and basins. Do you understand me? You've not seen people who are in very hard, very difficult uh, conditions before. This was king that was sleeping in his royal palace, in his royal bedroom. They had to put mattress on the floor. Broad beds and basins, earthen vessels and wheat, barley and flour, parched grain and beans, lentils and parched seeds. Honey and cords, sheep and cheese of the herd, for David and the people who were with him to eat. For they said, the people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. When he was alone, there was no one to help him. This man came to help him. What did David do with them? Second Samuel 19. Second Samuel 19. And Basilai the Gileadite came down from Rogelim and went across the Jordan with the king to escort him across the Jordan. He was returning back to his palace. Now, Basilai was a very aged man, 80 years old, and he had provided the king with supplies while he stayed at Mahinem, for he was a very rich man. And the king said to Basilai, come across with me, and I will provide for you while you are with me in Jerusalem. Listen to his response. But Basilai said to the king, how long have I to leave? That I should go up with the king to Jerusalem, I am today 80 years old. Can I discern between the good and bad? Can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any longer the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be a further burden to my lord the king? Your servant will go a little way across the Jordan with the king. And why should the king repay me with such a reward? Please let your servant turn back again, that I may die in my own city, near the grave of my father and my mother. But here's your servant, Chinem, that was his son. Let him cross over with the Lord, my king, and do to him what seems good to you. And the king answered, Chinem shall cross over with me, and I will do for him what seems good to you. Now whatever he requests of me, I will do for you. Then all the people went over the Jordan, and when the king had crossed over, the king kissed Basilai and blessed him, and returned to his own place. But his son followed him. What became of Basilai's son? 2 Kings chapter 2, I beg your pardon, 1 Kings 2, 1 to 7. 1 Kings 2, 1 to 7. Now the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. That the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, he said, You shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, you know also what Joab the son of Zeruiah did to me and what he did to the commandments of to the commanders of the armies of Israel, to Abner the son of Ner and Amasa the son of Jethe, whom he killed, and he shed the blood of war in peacetime and put the blood of war on his belt that was around his waist. 
and also his sandals that were on his feet. Therefore, do according to your wisdom. Do not let his gray hair go down to the grave in peace. But show kindness to who? To who? How many sons followed him? One. He said, don't limit it to that one. Show kindness to the sons of Basilai, the Gileadite, and let them be among those who eat at your table. For so they came to me when I fled from Absalom, your brother. That's why you find in a family, they pick a minister here today, they pick a minister there tomorrow. It's because of all their father did that they are reaping. Do you understand? How are you living your life? That your descendants will continue to benefit from your labor long after you have gone. Can I, can I hear amen somebody? Yeah. Please note that whoever buys the fingers that have fed him or anyone who treats his benefactors or their offspring as detractors is neither a real man nor a gentleman. Rest assured, those who repay good with evil will definitely reap the harvest of their ingratitude. Ingrates cannot be great. Are you a gentleman? Stand to your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. The end of a matter is better than the beginning thereof. You have been with us throughout this period as we are examined, examining the dispositions of real men. Lord, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice will begin to fine-tune their spirit to be ministered to by the spirit of the living God that they will become reliable men, solution providers, gentlemen, Promise keepers, dead violent men, heavenly citizens, in Jesus' mighty name.